We've celebrated birthdays already. It is the church's birthday. Happy birthday, church. It is very appropriate that on the birthday of the church, we've welcomed these eight folks to be formally part of this fellowship. Eight new people are now members of Zion Church. That is exciting. What exactly does it mean that they are members of this church? One of the questions that was asked them when they first expressed that interest was, are you sure you know what you're getting into? An entirely appropriate question because membership carries some very different meanings. On one side, you may recall several years ago, the American Express credit card ran an ad campaign that featured this slogan, membership has its privileges. If you join Planet Fitness, you will have access to all those wonderful machines that will make you look just as buff as the people in the commercials, sort of. But you have to join you have to become a member to do that. If you have a Costco membership, you will have access to a host of products and services, and in each of these cases I've just described, you invest something, usually money up front, to receive certain benefits that non-members don't have. In fact, one church capitalized on this theme for their sign one Sunday. Don't know about the coffee, but I can tell you that joining a church is not the step to give you after everlasting life. It's part of the step. So the idea is that if you invest something, you'll get a benefit from it if you become a member. Then there is membership, not about what you get, but about who you are was told this morning about a graduating class, a 50-year reunion. Next week, we're going to celebrate some of, or one of our graduates of the Anvil Cleona High School class of 2017. A member of a graduating class. It's someone that you are. Maybe you're a member of the working class. Anybody here rich enough to not have to work? Thank you for chuckling, I appreciate that. When an insurance rep will ask you, how many members are in your family? And somebody from the family will eventually say, five if you count the dog. I mean, he's a member of the family like all the rest of us. It's not something you earn or do get, it's something that you are. This sense of membership is not about the benefits that you pay, it's about who you are. And in the evangelical tradition, we believe that simply having information about Jesus is not what being a Christian is about. The information has to translate into an experience with him, submitting to his loving authority, letting him make you into what the Bible calls a new creation. And when that happens, the moment that happens, it's not because you've invested in something that you get a benefit from it, it's because you now become someone new, someone different. You become a member of God's family, the church universal. We said that this morning in that membership ritual. You have a new identity, you become a child of God in John 1. The gospel says, he came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, nor a husband's will, 
but born of God. A little later in the scripture, Paul also says that you are adopted. Now, wait a minute. I'm born into a family, but I have to be adopted? God legally claims you. In the time when Paul was writing, a Roman citizen, if he found a young man that caught his fancy, someone that he felt he could trust, someone that he wanted to invest his life and fortune into, he would formally adopt that person. And this Roman citizen would now legally become his father. When you become a child of God, not only are you born into his family, but God legally makes you his own. You become God's child legally. And now Satan doesn't have a claim against you. He can accuse you of all kinds of things and does regularly. And the truth is, nothing that he has to say about you is the whole truth. Because you've been legally adopted by God. Paul says in Romans 8, the spirit that you receive does not make you slaves. God's not there to make you into a cringing, terrified lump so that you live in fear again. Rather, the spirit you received brought about your adoption to sonship, and by him we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit testifies with our spirit that we are children of God. This membership is not about something you get, it's about something you are, who you are, and just as importantly, whose you are. But Jesus does not leave you to fend for yourself at that point. He calls you to a particular family. One of my favorite things to do when I visit in the hospital is to stop in the nursery. All this potential, all these wondrous, sweet, beautiful lives that have not been touched by the ravages of the world yet. They, the moment of their birth, become part of the human family. But the human family cannot raise one of those children. The human family is too big and broad and nebulous. That child needs a particular family, a particular mom, particular dad, to be invested in that child's life and help that child to grow and thrive. A young Christian, someone newborn in Jesus, is part of the great family of God, but also needs a particular spiritual family to grow and thrive. A certain set of people who share the same commitment to support and encourage and hold accountable. I'm looking at this amazing seven-month-old baby and thinking to myself, it's hard for me to imagine that this is a sinner. She's sweet, she's innocent. But the Bible says she is born with that sin nature and one day will need to come to that place of faith in Jesus. But at the moment, you wonder what she's gonna be, what she's gonna do, as every parent with a baby does. And the fact is, she's gonna do some things wrong and she's gonna do some things right, but she has a particular family in this case, an extended family that will invest in her. Every Christian needs that same particular family. And so the Lord calls us to commit to a particular group of people. And their purpose is to help us become like Jesus. I have shared this with you before, and I'm really sorry to be the one to share this with you even though there are a lot of people in this particular family, and I'm gonna talk about Zion now because this is the particular family we're a part of, a lot of the people here will encourage you and support you, and they'll be really nice to you, and you'll really enjoy their company. There are some others, not so much. 
Are those of you who are laughing among the not so much? There are some people that you will not get along with quite as well. In fact, they will just downright rub you the wrong way. What really works well is if the person who rubs you the wrong way stays in the back of the church and you can stay up here and you never have to deal with each other. And God says, that's not the way it works. I need to see the hands of those of you who have arrived. You have come to the place where God has done everything he needs to do in your life and you could go to heaven at this very moment knowing that you are completely wholly sanctified. Would you raise your hand? Good, because I was afraid we would have to have a conversation after this service. The fact is, you have rough spots that need to get smoothed out and knocked off. And it's not only circumstances of life and situations out there that do that. The tool that God often uses to work on your rough places has a face and a personality. And it can be like sandpaper to you. And sometimes the thing in you that needs to be knocked off or smoothed over really needs a lot of work. And so you need a more heavy duty sand paper, even a machine to do that work. And sometimes that person you really have a hard time with is that very machine whose purpose in this church is to help you get rid of those places. There are other people in the church Normally they're really nice, but they realize there's this thing in you that needs a little bit of attention. And so they'll come along and gently sand you, let you know this isn't quite right. The wonder that is the body of Christ at Zion Church is that in the same way there are people who do that to you, there are people for whom you are sandpaper. Eloise Of all the people in this church I can think of, and you're hating the fact that I just picked on you and scared you to death. I'm trying to think of anybody in here who doesn't like Eloise Queen, okay? She's looking to find out because she wants to talk to you afterwards. Everybody likes Eloise, but the fact is there are some people, maybe at work, that you rub the wrong way. You're nodding. You try not to let that happen, but there are people that you rub the wrong way, okay? Can you imagine Eloise rubbing anybody the wrong way? But yeah, it happens. (laughs) The guy who just raised his hand is her husband. (laughs) I got a feeling there's been a lot of sanding going on between the two of you over the years. One of the reasons we need each other is because we've not arrived And the reason there is a Zion church is not because I want a comfortable place to go and worship where they sing the songs I like and where they do the things I like and where everybody knows me and makes me feel comfortable. That's not what Zion church is about. The church is here to help you become like Jesus. And lots of times there will be things that you enjoy and things you love about this place. There will be times there are things that you just don't like about this place. It's not a time to cut and run. It's a time to stay and find out why it is that I don't like this. Maybe the Lord's using this thing to sand me. Maybe the Lord's using that person to sand me. This clock was once wood and metal. And then someone cut the wood and sanded the wood and shaped it. Someone heated the metal and shaped the metal. Someone assembled those pieces carefully according to a plan and this magnificent piece was the result. The Lord is doing that same kind of work in Zion Church, in us. The difference between this clock and the people here is that this clock does not keep growing. It needs a little attention from time to time, but this, what you see, is what you'll get. 
the people in Zion Church are still growing, which means there will be changes in your life, which means they, you will find places that need to be sanded and knocked off. Even if you get to be as wonderful and winsome as a lot of the people in this church, there are still places in you that need that work. And so God has called us together for that work to happen. But that work cannot just happen on a Sunday morning. Can't I be part of Zion Church without becoming a member? I don't like joining things. What's this point of putting your name on a dotted line? But that's... And I grew up with the sense that I was told so often that joining a church doesn't make you a Christian that I began to believe that joining a church was a bad thing. And the fact is, by joining, you are making a public commitment. You are saying to everyone else here, I am committed to you. I am willing to use the abilities God gave me in the way he wants me to use them for the good of this whole family. I am invested in these people in the same way that I hope they are invested in me. And that's what being a member is about. Look inside your bulletin for a second. That neat insert with the clock on the front. What makes Zion Church tick? And there's that listing on the front. Are these the people that make the church tick? They have a lot to do with it, but on the inside you see you have a place. We together make Zion Church tick. And the Lord has invested some of his gifting in you for use here. This listing will give you a suggestions of how to use your gifting here. You may have others. We would love to talk to you about it. Membership has its privileges. Not that it gets you what you want, but it helps you become what God designed you to be. Let's pray.